We have, uh, amongst other treasures in the library, or in the band itself, is a Sousa tradition, which we carry on. I would say that it would be very unusual for a band concert, a tour band concert, not to include or perhaps open with the Sousa march. And generally, there are encores, even with the, the that might be quite contemporary band repertory. Could be transcriptions. Remember, bands were the uh, the aegis of bringing music to the American public way before or orchestras, in some cases, existed. But bands were that traveled introduce. Verdi and Wagner and, uh, and Puccini to the American public long before uh, the, uh, the radio or, or what have you, or even orchestras and, or opera companies. So a lot of that is still in a traditional program, we, and we call the word transcriptions. Sousa always played transcriptions. Uh, he played a lot of original music. He played also Sousa is credited for introducing ragtime to the United States with his band. We, we get uh, uh, Scott Joplin introduced uh, through Sousa. He introduced, uh, interestingly, uh, we, we think of uh, marches that he only, he wrote 130 odd marches, but he did not just play marches. He played serious music, classical music, ragtime, uh, a lot of novelettes, but marches were all usually encores. And it's also interesting to see that uh, the march the Washington Post is known as a dance step, it, and it introduced the two-step and became the rage of Europe. So we still maintain that tradition. In fact, if you go on any, to any Marine Band concert on tour, the band tours every year in the fall it used to be up to 12 weeks. Well, now I think it's a little less than that in a different section of the country each year. But I would say that even if you went to a Marine Band uh, concert today, the last number on the, uh, on the first half of the program, or right prior to intermission, would be an encore, and it would be Semper Fidelis, the Sousa March. And then I think that the concert would generally end with Stars and Stripes Forever. <laughs>